We are changed as technology offers us substitutes for connecting with each other face to face. We are offered robots in a whole world of machine-mediated relationships and network devices. As be instant message, email, text, and Twitter, technology redraws the boundaries between intimacy and solitude. We talk of getting rid of our emails as though these notes are so much excess baggage. Teenagers avoid making telephone calls, fearful that they reveal too much. They would rather text than talk. Adults, too, choose keyboards over the human voice. It is more efficient, they say. Things that happen in real time take too much time. Tethered to technology, we are shaken when that world unplugged does not signify, does not satisfy. After an evening of avatar-to-avatar -avatar talk in a network game, we feel at one moment in possession of a full social life and in the next, curiously isolated, in tenuous complicity with strangers. We build a following on Facebook or MySpace and wonder to what degree our followers are friends. We recreate ourselves as online persona and give ourselves new bodies, homes, jobs, and romances. Yet suddenly, in the half-light of virtual community, we may feel utterly alone. As we distribute ourselves, we may abandon ourselves. Sometimes, people experience no sense of having communicated after hours of connection. And they report feelings of closeness when they are paying attention. In all of this, there is a nagging question. Does virtual intimacy degrade our experience of the other kind and, indeed, of all encounters of any kind?